the music retail show. Hey, everybody, we're going to hop right in here. Uh, today, we're going to do another podcast, and we have a great special guest in Alan Haynes from the Music Stop. So, Alan, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. And as you know, Nate hasn't chimed in and said anything, nor has him and I had a dialogue uh, because he is not here. He is in Florida with his family on the beach. I've seen a lot of pictures. I don't like him right now because he looks like he's having fun. Good for him. And Yes, good for him and good for his family. So uh, I know they go once a year down to Florida, and his kids love going down there. Uh, and they have great pictures. They catch crabs and they cook on the all over the place. It's just a, it's a good story. So I'm glad they're doing that. But we're glad you're here, Alan. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, we, cool. We've got a lot to talk about. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot. I'm going to hopefully a- ask some questions and and let you elaborate on them because I think you're more interesting. And uh, what you'll have to say will be uh, what what people want to they want to hear. So um, hope you're okay with that. I'm great with. It. Let's do it. So what I would like to start out with <clears throat> is is kind of uh, get to know how you got to start in the industry. Now, this may be – this is a different question because I'm not asking you when did you start your music store or open up your store, which okay. we'll get to in a minute. But how did you start in this industry? Well, it's actually kind of a, a, a weird uh, – entrance into it actually i uh, went to mtsu i I moved from knoxville to uh, murfreesboro to go to mtsu Mm -hmm. to get a broadcast journalism degree so i actually was going there for their mass comm program Um, i had done my two years in knoxville and i was coming to finish there and i um, locked my keys when i moved to town i didn't know anybody so i locked my keys in my car in front of the music store that was on the square uh, so I went in and asked if they could call a locksmith or a, back then a police officer would open a, mm-hmm. uh, a lock for you. And they did. It took like two hours for, for uh, somebody to arrive. So I sat with the owner and his wife, chit chatted, you know, just I wasn't even there trying to get a job. Um, and probably a week or so later in my dorm room, I get a phone call and it was the owner's wife, Brenda. And she asked if I was the guy that had locked his keys in his car and I was like yeah she was like do you want a job uh in this particular store I played music but I was not in school band as a as a child um and that's what they focused on really and so I was like I really don't know too much about it she was like you know what we can teach you that and so that's how it started I went to work for them in college I ended up uh managing that store for the owner for a few years uh up until his retirement and then that's Kind so it was mainly a band <laughs> store. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. They did combo, but uh, very much like our store, yeah. the focus was definitely on school band. Gotcha. Okay, so that's where your background came from, and that's and we'll get to band stuff. Um, and that 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 would be a question of uh, that I would ask is how did you get into band? But I think you just answered that mm-hmm. question. So how long did you do that? Um, from ninety two until. He, um, 2001. Now, did you take over the store? Did you buy the store? Is that how you came into the store? No. Uh, so what happened was, uh, as I uh, started working for him, I immediately fell in love with the business. I mean, I thought it was awesome. As a matter of fact, I wish I could go back in time and and be part of school band. I think it, it's, it really is a changer mm-hmm. for musicians. But, um I got involved in it, working part-time. Uh, once I got married, uh, I went full-time working for him, and the idea was to purchase the store from him. But being so young, it being such a large, I mean, even though it was a small business, it was a fairly large small business. And uh, getting financing to do it was just not something that, that was going to sure. be easy. I tried. Yeah. And so. I knew he was getting ready to retire, so the idea came up to uh, look at some chain stores. Uh, Music and Arts uh, ended up being the one uh, that we went with. He sold to them, and I I moved into managing that store for them. So I helped through that transition, and I stayed with them through the transition, kind of helped them kind of get leveled out before I decided that I still really wanted to own my own store. Uh, So... I talked a banker into giving me a small loan to get going and went out and opened my own store in 2002. 
2002. So what was that like? I mean, you're, how long had you been married at this point? Uh, 96, so eight, six, what is that, six years? Yeah. So was your wife going, oh, no? No, she wasn't, actually. Uh, she, I, I have to say, uh, I have to give her 100% credit, even today, uh, when I don't want to do it anymore. And I'm sure everybody goes she's, through she's that. She's the backbone. She huh? is the backbone. Gotcha. She is absolutely the backbone. Yeah, because every family. time I've talked to her and been around her, she seems kind of like a, a hidden driving force. She is the driving yeah, force. That's cool. It's, it's not even hidden. You, 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 yeah, yeah. You've she, got to have that, though. Yeah, you know? she's, she's a very strong lady. I'm very... Uh, fortunate to have her and she doesn't work at the music store with no you. Yeah. Uh, she does help us uh, she helps us in the fall during the busy season with rentals she takes care of scheduling the employees uh, uh, you know a few little things early on she did it was just us I mean it was bare bones it was a very tiny store um, when Sierra uh, was young I mean she played under the register while I worked because I was babysitting and working wow. and Brenda would come when she got off of mm-hmm. her job and help with books and then do that you know for the first couple of years you mm-hmm. know it was just the three of us in there kind of and well we had a couple of employees but yeah um, you know we spent a lot of time in the building together yeah and so when you started did you start it as a uh, like a combo store where you did band and uh, just regular MI stuff, or was it, did it lean on the band side, or or what what was the format of the store? You know, when I opened it, I just knew I didn't want to work in the corporate environment, and there was absolutely nothing wrong uh, with music and arts. They actually treated me very well. They're a good yeah, company, yeah. but. I, for me, I was so accustomed to working in that small business atmosphere, mm. it just didn't fit me. Sure. Uh, and so I really was just, whatever the community wanted, I was willing to do it to be able to work for myself. But what happened was we had a road rep, Paul Ferguson, that had worked for Marvin for a lot of years. He and I worked together. And when he found out I was opening the store, he he had already retired, but he was like, you know what? I'm going to come work for you. Now, when you say road rep, are you talking about for band instruments? Yes, or yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just to clarify. So so he – yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so he had been our school road representative uh, with Marvin, did an excellent job. He, once the transition happened, he decided to go ahead and retire. But then he, once he found out I was doing that, he was like, you know what? I'm going to come work for you. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't even know if I can afford to pay you. He was like, we'll figure it out. Wow. And, and he came on, and it went gangbusters immediately. I'm, I, I was shocked, I mean, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. that, it, that it moved as fast as it did. So. so you guys were doing a little bit of everything. You guys were doing guitars, drums, and stop me when I'm uh, bringing up things that you guys didn't carry. Uh, you know, guitars, drums, band instruments, mm-hmm. uh, PAs. Were mm-hmm. you guys doing a lot mm-hmm. of that? Mm-hmm. Um, and so do you guys feel like that today, for anybody that's listening or watching, um, you guys have kind of, I'm guessing, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, evolved into – uh, a lot in the band instrument side is that accurate yes. but but when you guys started out you you were saying hey i'm just going to serve the community in any way uh, possible and today you guys kind of do that today still don't you I yeah because I, I i always tell people if they ask about the store i call it like a a, a general store we have a little of everything so if uh, so we aren't necessarily catering to pros uh, we're also not just catering to beginners. We have a little of everything in the shop. Uh, definitely a lot of focus goes into school band and orchestra, but of course, as you know, I mean, we sell a fair amount of guitars mm-hmm. as well. Um, I, I do a lot of PA installation. Which uh, we're going to talk about. I want to talk about that. And what else do you do? Uh, repairs uh, is a huge thing. We have a great repair shop uh, at Lessons. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I was thinking about last night, and and we it, it's funny because we touched on it a few minutes ago before we started recording, um, and that was age, you know, because we're we were talking about some funny stuff that mm-hmm. we may or may not get into, but what I was thinking about you is I felt like that you were at a you're at a unique age because I don't look at you as uh, the old guard, mm-hmm. and I don't look at you as the the new. 30 year olds that are are heavy on reverb and ebay and and going that way but to me i think you're the perfect owner 
you're at the perfect age to be successful. And when I say it, you've been that way for a while, so it's nothing new. But you know, you got a little bit of the of the wisdom and the knowledge of the older guys, but the hipness of some of the younger guys. And it's a fascinating uh, uh, a, a gathering that you have done by 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 doing this. You, you're into um, band and orchestra. Uh, PA uh, installs, which we're going to talk about more, and and obviously selling a lot of guitars and other uh, other stuff for the community. So a, a question that I had is, is part of your success because you have so many profit streams and then you have so many lines in the water, so to speak? I, I would say yes. Uh, I would definitely, especially in today's environment, uh, it, there are different ways of looking at that. Some people focus on one thing and focus on doing that really well, and I think that is smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is the other side of uh, by there are time there are seasons within a music store, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, especially school school band. I mean, uh, the fall is super busy for that. Uh, you know, it's Christmas basically in August and mm-hmm. September. That's when you, everybody is starting. Uh, but when school kind of slows down, we tend to be busier in the other parts of the store, so it kind of works out. So uh, once we kind of take care of uh, getting the schools up and going for the year, uh, we come into October, November. Now it's Christmas time, and we start to see guitar sales rise, obviously. Yeah. So having all of that going on, I think, definitely. Yeah, something going on all yeah. the time. So let's talk about, because we talk a lot in, in the podcast, we talk a lot about guitars and guitar manufacturers and all of that. So let's concentrate on some of the band stuff. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys uh, do as far as the band side? You you were talking about road rep, Mm -hmm. which now I think you have a couple, don't you? We have two full-time road representatives. Okay. So we go, we pretty much cover from Cookville, Crossville, through Nashville, down to nearly Huntsville. Okay. Yeah. And for, for those that are listening, we're talking a big part of Middle Tennessee. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, so you have those guys that are hitting those stores all the time. And what is it that they're doing? So a big thing that we offer is – and. Once again, I have an analogy for what we do uh, on the road. I kind of look at it as uh, waiting tables. What we try to do is the band director has their hands full. Mm-hmm. If you've ever been in a, a band room, mm-hmm. you know there's kids everywhere. It's a I, I don't know how they do that job. It's a it's a very challenging. and then they got parents to deal with. And they got parents. So <laughs> what we do is, of course, we rent instruments. Mm-hmm. So we go in in the fall with the beginners. We rent instruments, but then throughout the year we go by weekly visit uh, the directors. We take care of repairs that need to be taken care of. If they have accessory needs or, or instrument needs, we take care of that stuff for them. And what we try to do is stay out of their way. We, I want to be invisible. When we go in there, I want it to be seamless. The director can continue to work. They let us know what they need. We quickly get out of their way. Wow. Uh, and that way, they're not taking more of their time because you know a band director it is not a teacher uh, job where you're going in for eight hours Mm -hmm. i don't know a successful band director that works less than 10 or 12 hours a day absolutely there's always things going on so if they had to take more time to come into the store that's just another thing they have to put on their list for the day Um, and a lot of our directors and unless we're having special events they never come into the actual shop. Mm-hmm. We go to them. We take care of them there so that they can go home when they're done. And that is something they don't have to wow. think about. That's good service. I mean, I think it's important. Oh, I think it's crucial. Now, how do you compete? And, and maybe maybe it's kind of the schools have gone away from it. But I know for a season that uh, they were going online for everything. Mm-hmm. They were getting it from big box stores. They were going to big places to get their stuff. So how do you compete with that? I mean, you know, um, I could probably answer part of it by the service that you're talking about. Uh, but what, what, how, do you, how do you compete with that? Um, you know, when... I was still working for Marvin is when Mars Music came in. I don't know mm-hmm. if you oh, remember I re- yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a big deal. Uh, they were the 
first big box store that did everything that started going into all these different areas throughout the U.S. And they had a lot of money. They had a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, Sam Ash existed, but they hadn't started to expand yet. Guitar mm-hmm. Center didn't do band. Yeah. And so they really were the first one to kind of do it all. And it was very scary. Yeah. But what we found out was that service, going out there and taking care of them one-on-one, ultimately – uh, you know, wins. I mean, because it's not, I, I truly believe there are certainly customers that it's only about the price, but I think that a vast majority of them see value in what we're doing. And they understand that we have to make a certain amount of money to provide that service. Oh, and that's absolutely. not an excuse to charge. More. No, it's a trade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, because I, if I was that band director, I would be I would do it. I would love you walking in my door um, because, like you said, they work countless hours. They're tired. They've got other things to worry about um, than fixing something or running out of something. But if they have someone to help them with that, it's worth a, a, an extra couple percentage on a on on stuff because their time is valuable as well. And plus, Plus, your, your guys' time is, too, because you have to travel, you have to gas, you have to pay somebody to do it. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah. And we still, I mean, we try to stay very competitive pricing-wise. We're not necessarily the cheapest on everything, uh, but we definitely don't try to use that as an excuse to charge more. You know, we, we try to make a decent profit sure. um, uh, while still providing that yeah. service. So. Yeah. So how many schools do you cater to? Um, I would say on a weekly basis, we probably, that's a, that's a good question. A hundred or more. Wow. A now, lot, so, so let's lot. back up a little bit. I don't want to, I don't want to hop around too much cause I tend to do that. So I'm going to try not to, but I'm going to do it is, is if you're starting out, how do you start out? Like there'll be someone that's inspired and they're listening and going, man, I've been struggling. I need to get into band stuff. I need to get into that part of, of business. How do they start out? You know, I think that probably the school band market is one of the more complicated uh, uh, parts of the market to get into. And the reason is because there are several things that need to be in place. You need to have the ability to repair instruments. And you can't just pull somebody off the street to do that, as you know from oh, yeah. running this business, yeah. just like guitars. It takes – it's a skill. Uh, it, it's it's mm-hmm. a very uh, specific skill. Um, you need – if you're going to have road reps, they need to be knowledgeable in the business. Gotcha. I mean, I'll be honest. I I thought I knew a lot about school band five or six years into working for Marvin. And today, I can tell you, I still need to learn things. Yeah. It's it's There's a lot to it. Oh, yeah. Because there's so many instruments. It's not mm-hmm. like guitar where once you learn the basics of an acoustic or an electric, you kind of know the ins and outs. We're dealing with a lot of instruments, French horns, flutes, clarinets, all that stuff. So there's a lot My head to is learn. Hurting. Yeah, it's a it's a whole <laughs> lot to know. Matter of fact, when we hire people, that's one of the first things is that the job is not hard, but the amount of knowledge you need yeah. and you have to be willing to continue to learn mm-hmm. to be successful at it. Now, do they fix instruments or are they just are they just servicing? They are primarily servicing. Okay. They they'll do small repairs on site um, but by and large their their job is they are the liaison between the store and the director. Gotcha. Uh, this is what they need. They come to us. We have people that take care of pulling the orders. We have people taking care of the repairs, and then of course we do the the rental. And you, and you have uh, separate repairmen. Are yes. they in your shop? They or are. They on the, okay. Yeah. yeah. And they bring them back, and then yeah. And then so next they bring week them, they take them back. Yeah, hopefully next week they go okay. back out, unless there's a unforeseen problem. So you're renting them, so you probably have another instrument to replace them, so that the the student isn't going to miss a week of of not having an instrument. <laughs> Typically, the schools will have some loaners in the band room that they can use for the week. And, you know, if if they bring it into the shop and it's a small repair, we'll try to do it then so they don't leave it. But, you know, there certainly are times when they're going to be without the instrument for a week, but hopefully they have a loaner, you know, within the school, they have something to use. Gotcha. And how many approximately, and I don't want to ask questions, it's none of my business, but approximately how many instruments do you rent out? We ran out a lot of instruments. Okay. 
Okay. Because I know when I worked in retail, and I'm trying to remember exactly because I didn't work on that side, because you had to be a little smarter to work on the band side. And, and I stayed over <laughs> where the guitars and drums were. I, we had somewhere, I know at least 800 instruments. And uh, we ran out far more than that. Yeah. And, and, and that's great because you always have money coming in. Well, we did. We had mm-hmm. checks coming in the mail all we the time. We call it mailbox money. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, I, nice. I remember in the dead of the summer, and I've told this story before, dead of the summer, it was dead. I'm in Arizona, and it's hot as I'll get out. Nobody wants to come into your store. And I was just worried so much. And the owner comes in, and he always had his checkbook under his thing. And I'm like, we're trying and this and that. And he's like, don't worry about it. And I, I didn't know. I was like, what are you talking about? about and he says we don't have to sell a guitar all summer and i go what are you talking about and he goes see this these are all checks from from instruments that we have out on loan it pays for all of our bills pays for everything don't worry about it yeah and it really opened up my eye to profit centers um different ways to make money outside of just focusing on guitars and drums and that's why this fascinates me i'm not a a band guy i appreciate it i like it Mm -hmm. um and all that but if i had a music store I would do exactly like you're doing because there, there's value in having all these different uh, revenues of money coming in, and I think you're hitting on that. So um, I think that's one reason outside we like you, uh, one reason why we wanted you to come in to talk about the band stuff because, uh, again, we talk about guitar stuff all the time. So I think it's fascinating. So so what is your role there right now? What's what's your role today? Um. I mean, I I guess I am still the owner operator. I am a little more hands off than I have been in previous years. The probably the last two years, I've been a little bit more hands off, um, um, but I still kind of oversee day to day. Uh, and when you say hands off, is that just because you got some really good employees that are filling the need, and you can just kind of sit back and and when I say sit back, I don't I mean you're you're yeah. screwing around. I'm 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 thinking you can sit down and look at the whole picture and and kind of be an owner as opposed to an owner who works his butt off all the time. Right. You know, we've definitely I've I, I've actually been super fortunate to have excellent employees by and large throughout the years we've had the store. There have been times when we've had one or two that weren't necessarily up to the standard that I like, but I'll be honest, almost everybody that has worked for me uh, have been amazing employees, uh, and I still have relationships with them. Matter of fact, the oldest employee that I had, like my v- number one employee, Rusty Sexton, uh, texted me Sunday uh, just to, he was on stage with Tom Morello. Oh, wow, uh, cool. <laughs> uh, so I, I stay, I mean, we're still, I mean, I'm in we're contact in with contact all of them. Yeah, yeah, when I go to L.A., I've got a couple of the guys that live out there that are working in music. They We always make time to that's visit cool. with one another. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, yeah, so been very, very fortunate in that part. Yeah. Now, so you touched also on uh, uh, installs as well. So mm-hmm. you guys do a lot of PA installs. Is mm-hmm. that with, like, schools, churches? Give us an idea yeah, what that is. Yeah, schools and churches. Um I mean, the schools alone will keep you busy, obviously, because there's uh, needs for sound, not only in gyms or or auditoriums, but in classrooms, whatever. But the big trend that's kind of started happening that I got into very early uh, is now marching bands are are using sound systems yeah. on the field. Yeah. So um, that's become a huge thing within the marching band world. And most band directors will tell you they don't know much about sound. Sure. So that has really become a win-win for all of us because mm-hmm. I'll go out there and help them custom build this system that they put on the field for the fall. Now, why do they do that? They're already so loud. And I'm you, being a little sarcastic. You know, them. it's... Really, I don't know when the last time you watched a marching show from a from a high school, but it's pretty impressive. It really is. It's not what you think of when you think a nineteen eighties marching band. Gotcha. And not to say that that wasn't impressive, but it was a totally different. Animal. No, it wasn't that impressive. A, you can go ahead and say that. <laughs> it, it is a. It's a <laughs> real. And there are definitely uh, people that don't agree with this sound on the field, obviously because. You know, that's not traditionally the way it's been done, but it is the way it's moved. Uh, DCI, the drum corps, oh, yeah. really pushed that forward with that stuff. And that's big. It's huge. Yes. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, and it's 
it's pretty killer to watch. Yeah. And so that has kind of become the thing where they can make the show much more exciting by and it probably cleans up stuff. the sound a little bit too because it, well it, and they do sound effects they can m- put that stuff in with the with the visuals on the field gotcha. so and with these uh, you know the mixers now being so smart you can program that stuff to where mm. you know week to week when they're doing these performances they don't have to worry about it gotcha well, that's cool. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, what else are you installing? I mean, get, get into the church side. Um, is schools the biggest, and yeah, then churches? Yeah. It- I mean, probably small churches. You know, we have some excellent sound companies in Nashville. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so, I would dare say we get. I don't want to call it scraps, but we definitely do the smaller stuff. Sure. Um, I, a lot of which is focus. probably easier and probably better, isn't it, for you guys? Or? It's definitely easier, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's smaller money though. It, yeah. You know, it's you you're not. It's not as profitable as doing the big things, but obviously it takes a lot far less time. But yeah. I, I would say a majority of what I do is within the schools because we're already working with the schools. Yeah. So the relationships there, they know I'll show up. They know I'll take mm-hmm. care of it. And it, I think it just makes sense most mm-hmm. of the time. Now, are you doing the installs in the in the schools and churches, or do you have somebody else do that, or what's that? I, like? I primarily head that up, and actually, I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years. I was talking about being kind of more hands off. Yeah, I do spend a lot of my time doing that. Mm-hmm. Now, from the day to day, do you run the store day to day right now? Uh, right now, obviously, uh, my daughter Sierra. That's off camera. And, and for you there. listening, he's pointing to his daughter. He's not being rude. Yeah. Uh, she, which uh, we're going to talk about. She's she's the last thing on our list. Okay. So we're just kind of letting it simmer. All right. <laughs> but I think she is um, going to start helping take care of day to day as we move forward. She just graduated from MTSU with her music business. Degree. Yes. Yes. She interned with you guys. Thank she you. She did. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, but at the moment, I'm still kind of. Now I'm going to jump ahead and, and say, what are you going to do? You know, that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, I think, and if if there are music store owners out there listening to this, they will absolutely appreciate that. It, it takes so much brain power and time to run a business day to day. I guess yes. it's any business. Yeah. Uh, that thinking of the next thing can be challenging because you're out of you're out of steam by the end mm-hmm. of the day to start thinking about new ideas and I'm very excited about this. I don't know if she will have me uh, you know focusing on she PA. May fire you. She may fire me. <laughs> I may be looking for a job so anybody yeah. out there that needs somebody with we may have years you experience interning with us. You there know? you go. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not positive yet. You know, to be completely honest, I, I don't plan on just exiting. Uh, I plan on helping her as long as she wants my help, yeah. and and starting to slowly look at other things. Probably going to stay in the industry because it's the sure. only thing I know at this sure. point. Now, let's you're, you're getting ready to take. Uh, uh, I guess we'll call it a sabbatical. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is my second year doing that. So, yeah. uh, and it really has. I mean. Once and you, you kind of lit up. You were kind of glowing there for a minute. Yeah, so I, I guess you're I'm excited. You're excited. Okay. So it kind of goes back though to having Brenda as mm-hmm. an, an incredibly supportive wife. I cannot, and I'm not brown nosing Brenda. If you listen to this later, but <laughs> she is an amazing woman. She, even when I'm being kind of crazy, she kind of goes with it. Mm-hmm. And I came up with this idea. I was just a little burned out. You know, I've been doing this a long time. So last summer, I told her I wanted to go surf for a month. I'm really into surfing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But it's something I've always done a week at a time when you go on vacation. And I told her I wanted to do that. And she said yes. So last summer, I did that for a month. I, so I left at the 1st of June, came back at the end of June. And, and where I, did you go? Uh, I spent the majority of the time surfing in Huntington Beach. Oh, yeah. 
met a really sweet lady through Airbnb that let me stay in her house, and we've become friends with her now. Yeah. Matter of fact, she, we took her to Nam in, oh, in LA you? this okay. back in January, How and neat. I'm going to be staying with her uh, again this summer. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm doing that again this summer. I'm going to head out here in a couple of weeks. And wow. And so, what what does your day look like when I'm doing that? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much surfing. I, I hooked up with a. a, a I took some, so I, I already knew how to surf, but like one week of year surf, not great. It takes you and, a couple days to get the rust yeah, off. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. I uh, took some surf lessons last summer, and they offered packages just like anything. You could get a lesson for a day or three days or mm-hmm. seven days, and I wasn't sure how many I needed. So I told the guy, I was like, you know, I'll, it was cheaper for more, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, if I if I take you know, three lessons, and I decide I want a few more. Can I get the same deal? No problem. the The last day, he was like, "Man, you know, you're doing great, but I think we could learn some, you know, other tricks and things. You ought to go ahead and sign up for a couple more." And mm-hmm. I just jokingly said, "I was like, you know, you guys should just let me help in the shop and just trade out. I'm going to be here for the month anyway." And when we went back that afternoon, they said. You know, yes, let's do that. Wow! So I ended up, yeah, <laughs> helping a couple of hours a day in the shop. You know, washing down boards or wetsuits, yeah. and then was surfed all surfed all. What day. was that like? I mean, working somewhere else, it was awesome because yeah. I'm not there. Is it was awesome. You didn't to, have the heaviness. You didn't have the yeah. There was the, no the, burden of the bills being yeah. paid. It was just really doing a good job for the guy. I, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I think that they appreciated having the help. I mean, not that sure, I did sure. a ton because I mean I was only there for four weeks, yeah. but just having the extra person to I'm help. I'm sure out. they had fun with it. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. So I had fun. So that was last year. Are you going to do the same thing this year? I think it's going to be the same setup. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and uh, how long are you going to be out there? Are you going to be out there a month again this year, or roughly a month? What yeah. do you mean roughly? It, you couldn't get no, you couldn't get in six weeks out of it. I, trust me, I actually <laughs> asked for two months when they agreed to one month last year. Wow. So, <laughs> but no, it'll be a, it'll be just yeah. just short of a month. Yeah, and what does that do for you? Um, you? You know, you talked a lot about stress and being an owner. There's just a lot of heaviness for a lack of better word what does that do for you when you get done with it i cannot i I can't even describe what i came back feeling like last summer Mm. because it's the first time in my adult life where i was able to hit the pause button and just 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 live just be just be it was really unbelievable and i know that that is not something that everybody has the opportunity to do sure and i definitely appreciate that i that brenda was willing to let me do that she did not have to go along with that Mm -hmm. and i know it's a pretty unconventional thing most people i've told about it think it's insane they're like does she have a sister yeah (laughs) Uh, but but i think she got back a better i hope she feels that she got back a better man when I came back because I was so clear. Yes. And it definitely, you know, once you get back into the grind, you know. Kind of wears you down a little bit. Yeah, and and you get back into the daily thing. It didn't last forever, but it certainly was a good recharge, and Mm -hmm. I came back wanting to be at work, enjoying Mm -hmm. it again. Now, how long before that was it? And you know, since she had had a vacation or, or had at least some uh, alone time. Well, I mean, we've always we uh, we've always taken vacations, um, mm-hmm. but a lot of times, like we'll take a vacation, uh, we'll take extra days when we go to Nam in L.A. Yeah, yeah. So it's still working. It's still time and, you to know, work. a lot of people yeah. think that we don't work and we do certainly have cool jobs let's be honest yeah yeah oh absolutely i mean mean, it's i'm not complaining but it's still work it is so that was probably the first time where i just because sierra and brenda took care of the store i i literally checked in once a day just to let them know that i didn't get eaten by a shark and i didn't do anything with the business at all so i was totally hands off so it's the first time ever 
I want to go. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> no, that's cool. Because we talk about a lot of times, and we have in the past, and we probably will be uh, talking about it in the future, and that's taking time and, and uh, to have time for yourself. And that's why I said sometimes you just need to be. Yeah. You just need to be alone. Sometimes you need to rest your mind and your your spirit and your just your body. And so I'm fascinated by that. I mean, especially a month, because I remember taking a cruise and I believe it was a seven, I was seven or a ten day cruise, and I was like, man, I was just, I did not want to do it because being on a boat, I was going to get stir crazy. Mm-hmm. It took me three days to decompress, but when I did, I was like jello. Yeah. I just wanted to just relax all the time, and and I, it kind of got me to thinking about how much stress. Uh, a store owner, a manager, or people that are um, have influence in 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 a store, how much they carry on a regular basis. So when you talk about taking a month or an extended vacation, I think that's an awesome things to uh, awesome thing to do because a lot of times we don't take care of ourselves as much as we really need to. And um, I think that you know anybody listening, hopefully that they'll get out of that. That man, I need to take a vacation. I need to have time for myself. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of value in that. So yeah, I like sure. hearing this story. I like you know I, I've heard it before because your daughter Sierra uh, shared that, uh, and, and I just thought it was cool. So I'm I'm glad you get to do it again this year. Hopefully, it's a yearly thing. Yeah, absolutely. I I mean I. I can't recommend it enough. If you have the ability to, and you have the right people that can help you with the business, then I certainly think. Yeah, what a refresher. Yeah, you come yeah. back. You're you're much more effective in what you're doing with that kind of break. Yeah, let let's talk. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit and and talk about the community where you're at. Mm-hmm. So you're in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yes. And uh, which is growing like crazy, you know. Yeah, there's a, there's it's it's becoming a a great place to live, and a, and and a lot of things you can do out in 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 uh, Murfreesboro. What do you do in the community? Because um, I feel like, again, from what people have told me, and even you, you know, your daughter has shared that that I feel like that you're loved in the community to where people. Uh, they're happy that you're there. So what do you do in the community? I mean, outside a band, church installs, and having a store, it seems like you're very active and you're just part of Murfreesboro. Hmm. Um, you know, we've just I, – I, well, I do a lot of things, uh, but we just have really good customers, to be honest with you. And I do care. I, I've always been it, involved in, rather it be school music or or local bands, especially uh, over the years. You know, going out if there's a local band and the you know, the kids ask me to come to their show, if I can go, I'll go. Mm. You know, and uh, not for business reasons. Yeah. I really enjoy just it. to support them. Yeah, yeah. and uh, same thing with schools. I mean, I, I was talking about that earlier. I, Working with school music, really, the one of the biggest regrets I have is that I did not participate in school band as mm-hmm. a as a kid. You know, I was in the stage band, sure, but sure. I, I didn't actually participate in, in in the band, the school, the school band itself. And uh, I seeing those kids and the friendships that are involved the community yeah. they have yeah. yeah it's so cool and so i mean i spend the you know i spend a lot of my time you know uh, participating in those things mm-hmm. um i help brenda a bit with some volunteer stuff but once again not nothing i've ever done was calculated for the business i never did that mm-hmm. i just felt like that's the that's our community that's so what you i do. just participate yeah. right yeah because there's i feel like the, you know there's a lot that you're doing that's not necessarily inward it's outward meaning that uh, you're not just saying this is about me but you're saying hey this is about all of us yeah. you know yeah. and and it seems like again i'm just observing this but it, it seems like that that kind of um it's contagious you know whether employees see that and they go hey i want to be more like alan or or your you know um you know your band directors go hey i really like that guy um, so it seems like 
just that in general is 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 something that we should all strive for is to not look at ourselves and say it's all about me but it's about all of us so um that's that's kind of the reason why i kind of uh, brought that up because i i feel like that you're catering to the community you're out in the community and it's not just self-serving um and then that's that's why part of your success comes from hey i'm just here to help hang out have fun and and enjoy everybody um so i appreciate that so let's look back on uh when you started to now what are some of the things that are different um, you know, I'm, I'm, I obviously there's been a lot of change in Everything. the industry. Yeah. Um, there's box stores. There's all this commotion in the industry. Um, but how has it changed, or or has it changed uh, a whole lot for you, or or give us a little bit of idea on that? Yeah, it's definitely a totally different uh, uh, thing than it was when I started. Uh, it, because you know you were talking about the age I'm at of old guard, new guard. It's also kind of I got into the business just before the internet really started to explode. Mm-hmm. You know, we all had dial up, yeah. but you weren't running business off dial up. Yeah. So um, it, even down to you know what the original store that I worked with uh, uh, at with Marvin Burton. Uh, you know, we did hand tickets. We used an old school cash register. We weren't using computers. We had one that we did the billing on for schools, but mm-hmm. it, it was, you know, very minimal of what we were doing. And, you know, fast forward to today, I mean, that is kind of the way it the way it works. And yeah, probably as far as competition at that time, there was mail order magazines, you know, that kind of thing. But pretty much you were competing locally with other stores in your area now we compete you know globally i mean we or at least across the u.s yeah Yeah. so we're not just competing with the guy that's down the street from us we're competing with people that are in totally different states so that part is vastly different Mm. so what would you do different if you look back and you reflect on your career i mean what would you do different because i know it's you know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, but there's a lot of times I look back on things, and I try not to look back a whole lot just because I just keep looking forward. But what do you look back and go, hmm, if somebody was sitting here for advice and, and what, what I uh, would recommend to them, what would be some of those things? What would you do different? What do you recommend for someone who's starting out and, and wants to be more like the music stop? Um, I would say the single biggest thing that I did and I see others do when they uh, start businesses of any kind is that you're you're so hungry to be successful. You know, that's really, you're just trying to float when mm-hmm. you get going. And you tend to make deals or promises with people that long-term are not really uh, of benefit to sustainable. your business. Yeah. They're not sustainable. Mm-hmm. And I did more than a little of that mm-hmm. uh, and I always I kept up the deal if I if I made the deal I kept it but mm-hmm. it will make you resent people gotcha. if you make deals that are not necessarily great for you as you get moving mm-hmm. but ultimately if you made that deal you need to stand by it and I True. do you know I, I would hope anybody that has done business with me if I told you I was going to do it I'd do it even if the deal mm-hmm. was not necessarily what was best for the business and Mm -hmm. so i would say even though you want to be successful you need to be very conscious when you are making promises to people that it's something that is going to make sense for you for a Mm -hmm. long time because you don't want to go back and uh you know uh, burn a bridge burn a bridge and upset people because you're not willing to do what you've agreed to do yeah, your word means something. It has, yeah, it has to. And you're going to have to do one of two things. You're either going to have to continue to do that, uh, even though it might be uh, uh, you know, hurting your business, or you're going to burn a bridge with someone. Mm. You know, Because once you've made that deal, I mean, I think you, you have to keep it. You do. Yeah. You do. So that's probably the big one. All right. So uh, let, let's talk a little bit. You, you talked well. You talked earlier. You had a, a wife, a store, and then you had this little one running on the on the floor below your feet, and that's your daughter Sierra. Mm-hmm. Which uh, we have had the privilege of having in, as you you mentioned, as an intern. Um, so you're still a young guy. 
And now you got this smart, intelligent young woman that is chomping at your heels like, Dad, go surf. I'm ready to take over. And I'm being sarcastic and I'm being a little whatever. Um, what is that like? I mean, because there's a lot of people that are, are, are not fortunate like you are. And they're at a pivotal age, but you're younger. You know, I, I would look at you if somebody has said, how many more years will he be doing this business? I'd say at least another 20 years. But you're at a, a unique place to where you have somebody who I feel from what I've seen is very capable to walk in your shoes. So how does that look for an owner out there? Because a lot of times, a lot of times owners want to hold on as long as they can. They don't really prepare the generation that's next. They just hold on. They give them a little bit of information to keep them around. But you're you you're going, you can do whatever you want. I'm I'm giving you uh, free reign how to i mean explain that um and correct me if i'm wrong no, on any no, of it no no I, I, no that is true i think that i discouraged her from picking this path to be completely honest not i would because, too yeah you know it's mm -hmm. it's not the easiest thing you can do uh i also have always encouraged her to do whatever she you know, felt like she wanted to do. We've always, you know, supported her in anything she wanted to try. Yeah. Um, but once she kind of had her mind made up, and I could tell she's a fairly stubborn. She's got a, a strong will, doesn't strong she? Strong will. I'm sorry. Is, strong she will. Get, yeah, she, yeah. Strong will. Did she will. get that from from your wife? I think from, a combination. Yeah, because of, of Brenda and myself. Because because Brenda, she's pretty tough girl. She's man. a very she's a very tough Italian lady. Yeah, for sure. So she gets it from both of us. But once, well, when she went to. MTSU to get her uh, uh, music business degree. The deal I made with her was she was going to leave in four years. You know, it's a four-year degree. We're not hanging out for six years like I did. <laughs> she's she's going to finish in four, and she did exactly that. She she kept her word to me, and that spoke volumes to me of yeah. my uh, uh, confidence in that she could run the business. You know that she will do what she tells you she will do, and I hope that her mom and I taught her that. I think yeah. we did, and so I'm I'm confident that she can run the business. And you know, I accidentally fell into working in this business. Like I said, you know, I locked my keys in my car, and now here I am. I've, mm -hmm. I and when I opened the store, all I hoped was that I could get her to adulthood doing it. And, yeah, I'm, and sure. I and I achieved that. Mm -hmm. So to me, I achieved the goal I was after. Yeah. And so th I think that's why I'm comfortable uh, letting her, you know, continue it if it's something that she feels like she wants to do. Now, because uh, uh, we went out to, we took her out to lunch um, a couple weeks ago, and and she told, she shared that she went to culinary school a little bit. She's an amazing cook. Yeah, which which I love cooking, and I almost did the same thing. Was there part of you that kind of wished she would have stuck with that, or or I, are you okay the way it's all worked out? I'm definitely okay with the way it's worked out because um, that was a pathway that she had in high school. Uh, she's excellent at it. She could do it. Uh, there's no doubt. And there was a time when I thought that's probably what she was going to do. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, the benefit now is, man, when she cooks, it's mm. so amazing. The great. Well, great she's food. never cooked for us. You, so I, you I, need I, to. I don't, you I don't know if you're to, lying or not. I'm telling you, you need to have her <laughs> cook you up something because she's an excellent cook. All right. So um, w when do you – and, again, I don't want to ask questions. It's none of my business. But but when do you foresee this happening? I mean, is this something that you guys are working on, or is it there's still more that's part of the process? Or as far as her kind her, of stepping into yeah. leadership, oh, it, that will take time. It, that is sure, and it should. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is not something that just because she graduated that she's just going to come in and take over and I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. It's not something like that. I'm going to stay as long as she needs 
me to stay to and mentor, help her. And, and her. I don't know that it, that when I say that 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 means I'm leaving. It might just mean that my role is different. Gotcha. I it, it, she like I said, it simply could be that I'm overseeing. Uh, doing sound installation, I she may put me on the road visiting schools. You know, I don't know what that looks like yet, but you know, we're not in a hurry to do that. Smart, you know, yeah. You know, it it can take as long as it needs to, mm-hmm. and it may take a long time. Who knows? Yeah. But I mean, she's sharp. She picks things up pretty quickly. So yeah. Are you sure about all this? feel very confident you about feel it. Good, huh? Yeah, I feel good about it. Well, I can attest from my standpoint cuz like you said she was a, an intern with us and uh, if we could if we could like bribe her and pay her a lot of money, we'd probably take her from you <laughs> to have her come over here cuz uh, she's a she's a she's a wonderful person, very talented. So you've raised a good daughter. Well, you and Brenda should be very very proud of that. Well, thank so, you. We are very proud. Well, good. Anything that I miss that you want to talk about? I mean, we could go no. on for hours. No, trust yeah, me. This, but this is going at some quick. point, I've got to stop and, and sure. whatever. But uh, um, we're fans of you guys. We're fans of your uh, wife and daughter as well. Um, so we, at, we as a company, we as people, are always uh, here with a handout and say anything that you need. We we're here for you. Well, um, we love you guys too. I yeah. think the coolest thing about this. Uh, uh, business is that I would dare say most people, if they're really enjoying it, is that the friendships that mm-hmm. we have in this business. It's so cool going to Nam's like going to a reunion. Yeah, you know, it's it's not it's so fun to see everybody because a lot of times we're talking on the phone, we're not seeing each sure. other face to face and that kind of thing. I think that's one of the unique things about this business uh, versus other businesses is that those friendships are there. It's not just business. Correct. You know. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about uh, going out to the NAM show and how it, you know, a lot of people don't think we're working. And uh, this year I took Nate out and Ian and we went out there and that was the first time they went to the winter show. And I'm telling you what, we worked our butts off. We did, not only did we did podcasts, but we had meetings with manufacturers. I mean, just one after another for, I think four days is is what I was out there for. As the far walking as the alone. I oh, mean, yeah, just the crazy. walking. It's we, crazy. We keep up with the steps, and I mean, the amount of walking you do in four days out no, it's there. it's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, and uh, but we had a blast. It was fun. It was yeah. good seeing people, yeah. uh, like you said, that you hadn't seen in a while because uh, you're used to being on the phone with them or see them maybe at the summer show if you're lucky. But it's it's a good community. So Absolutely. I'm happy. I don't have a real job. I'm happy Me to too. be in the in the music industry. Uh, happy for your family. Um, you know, thanks for loaning Sierra to us for a thanks while. Thanks for allowing her to come over. She really enjoyed it. Good. She did a good job. So I think I'm done. Are you done? I, I feel good. All right, man. Well, Alan. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate you. All right. You too, bro. The Music Retail Show.